Hey everybody, this is uh, Jordan, Crohn's Veteran Podcast. Thank you, thank you everybody for joining us. I have my two amazing co-hosts with me today, Renika Wood and CJ Cabrera. How are you guys doing? Great, 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 great. Hello. Thanks. Um, and today we are, we are uh, honored to have a very special guest. Uh, ben is here to, to share his uh, IBD journey and, um, and we're just very, very grateful to have him here. How are you doing, man? Good man. Hey, hey everybody. Hey. Gucci. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So um, you know, again, thank you for joining us. And you know, just to kind of start things off, um, you know, you know, I got a little bit of you know your background, you know, through talking to you on Instagram and stuff. Um, but you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, but for people that don't know, uh, you know, tell us tell us a little bit about you know your IBD journey. Okay. Um, I was diagnosed with Crohn's when I was eight years old. Um. They kind of didn't know exactly what it was in the beginning because this was back in 1994. So, so it was, you know, Crohn's was kind of new. Um, they thought it was lactose intolerant. They thought I had different allergies to stuff, but it ended up being on uh, being Crohn's. And for the next four years, I kind of struggled with my diet and my weight and uh, going in and out of hospitals and whatnot, um, always on like kind of experimental medicines. Uh, it got to the point where I was 12 years old. <clears throat> I weighed like 55 pounds and they wanted me to, you know, kind of take a break from food. So I was on a feeding tube and, and all, and pretty much like spending most of my sixth grade, 12 year old, uh, self in a hospital or in a, you know, in and out of it. Um, and it got to the point where the doctors really didn't know what to do. And we tried everything that we really could. So they gave me kind of an ultimatum and, you know, they, we can continue going down this road of uh, taking medicine and trying maybe some holistic approaches or, or whatnot, or we can do major surgery, which would remove, you know, all of my large intestines. And at that time, you know, they were telling me that I had pretty much like the 1%, you know, worst cases they were seeing like in my age mm. group. Yeah. And, um, it got to the point where for myself, like I really just wanted to be a kid again and I had to be homeschooled in sixth grade because I was just running to the bathroom 75 times a day. And um, so I just really wanted to be a kid and play basketball and, and, and go out and hang out with my friends and stuff. So like I, you know, listened to him about the surgery and my mom, um, you know, had me make the decision. You know, she, she at 12, you know, she really didn't want me to use her as an escape go or to resent her later on in life um for a decision so she wanted me to be okay with this decision and and you know listen to the doctors and and, and more importantly listen to yourself and your body and what you want because you're going to be the one that has to deal with it um so i opted for the surgery at uh 13 and this is my 21st year with a colostomy um since being 13, you know, going through middle school and high school and, you know, now all of my 20s and now I'm into my 30s, um, it's definitely been an adventure, um, to say the least. Um, you know, high school is are already hard for everyone. Um, right. You know, you're, you're, you're going through the growing pains um, physically and mentally. Um, but I was already kind of like past, I feel like that, uh, maturity wise. Because I've had I'm had to make a decision very young um, that most adults I think wouldn't be able to really comprehend. Mm -hmm. I had to make, and you know during the surgery it was like a nine hour surgery, and I guess supposedly a stitch ripped or so post surgery, and I was internally bleeding for a couple hours, mm -hmm. so they had to go back in and uh, another four or five hour sur surgery, and I was in ICU for like two weeks and. I could definitely say that, you know, being at that point or maybe even seeing maybe the white light or whatever puts perspective on things and reaching mortality at that young of an age, I feel shaped me and how I viewed or how I view things in life. Um, uh, yeah, so now it's 21 years later and... Um, I'm an audio engineer on the road. I work for bands on the road mm -hmm. as a sound engineer. Um, so I'm always tra I'm traveling the country 
um, or the world sometimes uh, with a band or bands. Um, right now, everything's obviously at a standstill. Um, I own a studio, uh, a recording studio, and also a rehearsal space for bands to come in. Um, but yeah, the, the journey with, with Crohn's, you know, didn't just end with the surgery because I still have particular like flare ups and or symptoms from it, but I'm just, you know, obviously not running to the bathroom 75 times a day. I've gained my weight back and I've, you know, um, healthy knock on wood for, you know, most um instances and i'm uh you know medicine free i don't have to take any pills or whatnot well you know well, i'm happy to hear that and you know i can you know definitely you know i think all of us here have you know been through some situations you know where there's definitely you know really you know the the the, the pain and the pain and just the discomfort of the experience you know just puts, puts a, a real perspective on your life and so mm -hmm. and so you know i you know i've you know I've had you know a couple of surgeries myself, and uh, you know, and the second surgery I didn't have you know pretty much any effective anesthesia for a couple of days after you know having 18 inches of my colon taken out, and so mm. I was just in extreme pain for days, and so you know, then so so going through something like that, you know, just really just changes things. It just, yeah, it really it does just, put things in perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, especially when you're going through some, you know, trying times in life, um, and you can kind of have this in the back of your brain, you know, that you've conquered something like this, or you continue to, because it does. It's not like, you know, IBD, Crohn's, or being the fact that I have a colostomy for life, like it's not going away. Right. Um, <laughs> and my mom is very like kind of tough love, where she was just like, you know, you can deal with this. You you can kind of go on top of the hospital and jump off, you know, but you, you you're going to own this and you're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to own it, you know, and, and, and not use it as an excuse, but use it as fuel, right. you know, you know, just you sharing about your um, early adolescent years and your transition from going from having this decision to make about either do I stay sick or do I go with this extreme surgery and you opt out for the surgery, you know, a lot of children now that I've seen, they have been very brave now about getting um, colostomies. Um, of course, you have some stores where children don't want to get them because of the stigma and they're teased and bullied. But I just really commend you for, you know, being that mature at such a young age. Because it took me, what, how I'm 38, it took me about <laughs> eight years to make a decision. Like, I'm not doing this. Because I wasn't meant to prepare for that until I had no other option but to do what I had to do. So I commend you for doing that. I'm, I'm sure Thank that. you. Much appreciated. Yeah. I know, I know a lot of kids can really appreciate that because they can see that there, there is life way past you having this iliosmic class. You still can live your life abundantly. You mm -hmm. know, that's the thing about it. Yeah. And, and so it has been, and it has been a great, you know, to be honest, it has been a great filter for everything with, you know, from relationships to, you know, just how you can particularly handle something. But, you know, if somebody is not going to vibe with it, it's just easy that they're just not in your life, you know? So right. it's made kind of some decisions particularly easier than others, just because, you know, there is that filter there that, you know, um, and I've had a hard time, you know, um, over the years too, of uh, telling people, or, you know, letting people in, you know, I, for most of middle school and high school, I, I lived a double life. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a while, especially just getting out into the real world and kind of, you know, realizing that, you know, the people who matter to you, your people, they don't give a fuck. So, right. Right. Uh, yes. and, and, and that's, and that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with that 100%. It's a, it's a, oh, right. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, so I'm, you know, I have a good, I have a good friend, uh, Adam Peterson. We we uh, interviewed him. He's also a sound guy, a musician, and so I'm just curious, you know, how has you know music, you know, uh, changed, you know, or influenced your life, you know, with Crohn's? Right. Um. Well, for having a, a colostomy bag, you know, like in traveling, it's made my life a little bit easier than some people who have to, you know, think about where the bathroom is, <laughs> um, especially at a festival where they're resorting to porta potties. And I don't really mind because I could just stand. 
Um, <laughs> but 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 with 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 coming up in the music industry in the business, I started off at the bottom. I was just a dishwasher and kind of worked my way up and kind of was able to you know find or fine tune all of the jobs on the way up instead of just kind of picking one thing. And I feel that that helped um, having kind of uh, the relationship that I have with, you know, with Crohn's that um, it allowed me to kind of take, you know, uh, a lot of things on and kind of, you know, always want to challenge myself. I was always kind of like wanting to challenge and push the envelope to tell, you know, to show myself that I can do it, that in quotations, I'm, I'm normal or, you know, whatever, whatever normal is, you know, um, but there hasn't been a lot of like negative things, um, you know, music wise uh, or career wise with Crohn's. But I have to say, like, it is the best, um, you know, medicine, it, or at least for me, is to, you know, be able to be on stage. I'm a drummer as well. So cool. being able to be on stage and, you know, play is, you know, definitely um, takes all that away. Um, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Oh, definitely like a coping mechanism a coping strategy you doing for sure yeah. and growing up it was basketball and then basketball it turned into drums and mm -hmm. then you know now later on in my later 20s and early 30s being more of a professional on the road and you know um you know being an audio engineer i'm also a drum tech and keyboard tech so um yeah, just, you know, trying to set challenges for yourself and small goals and, um, you know, s slow progress is still progress. But I, I I try or I've always been kind of mindful um, that I never really wanted to put, put Crohn's or me, ha me having a bag um, on anyone else. Most people mm -hmm. that I work with on the road would have no idea that I have a bag and or I even have Crohn's, hmm. um, you know, because I live a very pretty much normal life other than I can't eat popcorn. Yeah. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, you know, no one would really know. I guess that kind of goes back to kind of like the double life kind of thing, which is, you know, sometimes difficult too of who to, you know, let in and, and, and who to kind of okay. keep at bay. When do you decide who to let in? I, I, I mean, it's been some times where I haven't, you know, decided, you know, there's been times where I've um, been intimate with a, with a woman and, and like, she doesn't even know. Um, and I don't know how that's possible, uh, <laughs> but nothing, nothing even, you know, particularly comes up. And I feel like at times, uh, yeah, at times, I'm kind of trying to phrase this. Hmm. Yeah, at, at times, I guess it's just kind of in the moment, you know. And um, yeah, some things are kind of beyond words. But, you know, I guess if you just you kind of like feel it with certain people, you know, you feel that warmth and the maybe the thoughtfulness or the 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 non judgment, you know, mm -hmm. the non the non shame. Um, mm -hmm. And some, pe some 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 people are just kind of very like mindful and open and just open and you just kind of feel that right off the bat and i feel that people that have crohn's and, and, and probably you guys feel the same way we kind of develop a sixth sense you know because something kind of gets taken from us and we gain something else you know and i've kind of always felt that that i've could feel feel it out you know and some and some people just doesn't you know you did they just don't uh rub you the right way <laughs> right right yeah, like yeah, like, kind of like, yeah, like the the, the uh, spider senses are tangling type thing. So yeah, yeah. You know, I, I wish, and I'm pretty sure as time goes on, I wish that the negative stigma associated with a ileostomy or colostomy would, would be removed, because I think that people that have them, we are the ones that's most insecure about ourselves. And the people around us probably like, okay, well, you here, you alive, so what's wrong? Yeah, and the, and they and the, and they'll tell you up and down that you look great, and that that's not sometimes what you see in the mirror, right? Um, 
it's you know you can call it like what whatever it is you know but sometimes you know you're just you're just not there um and it took me a long time to get even where i'm at now where i'm comfortable with out clothes on or or uh you know taking my shirt off on the beach or going swimming and kind of having that like fuck it attitude i mean that took right. me a while um because you, you're right. I mean, that stigma. And even as a kid, like I lost friends over it, you know, even as now looking back how kind of idiotic it, it, it was, you know, for them, um, they, they, had, they, they didn't know, you know, they, they, they just, they, they, they didn't know better. Um, and, I, and I wish there was a little more, you know, teaching on, on it too. Yeah. Um, just disabilities or just things in, in in general, you know, you never know what people are going through. So it's just better to just, you know, or easier. It's very easy to be uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's, you know, so um, speaking of that, you know, there, you know, there might be some parents out, you know, listening or, mm -hmm. you know, even, or, or even a young person listening, you know, at some point, you know, and so, you know, well, you know, so if you could, you know, give, you know, a person that was diagnosed at a young age, you know, some advice, you know, on, on how to cope, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, any, are there, are there any kind of, you know, words of encouragement that come to mind? Um, you know, listen to your body and definitely listen to, you know, what your heart's telling you, especially like when you're getting this, um, overloaded sensory, uh, with what your parents are, you know, trying to tell you, tell you what the doctors are telling you, you know, take everything that they're saying and what you're saying and use the critical thinking gene that we're given and, you know, try to make a good decision for yourself right in the present, but also think of the future um, that you're going to be living a different life than everybody else, you know, but it's not what exactly is happening to you but it's what's happening for you. And, you know, I'm always trying to spin negatives into positives as much as possible. You know, you, we all have our down days, but if, if the good days outnumber the bad days then we're good, you know, and it's just trying to, you know, facilitate a really solid circle around you of positive people and people that have your back and whatever decision you make, they're going to, they're going to be there for you. And then, you know, and then the rest is really on you. And, and yeah, sometimes we get, you know, a, a shitty hand in life, um, but it's what you make of it. Cause sometimes you can, you know, sometimes you could rock a flush out of that. Beautiful. I guess for me, um, when you were sharing about the kids, like now you've been older and you have, you doing these beautiful things in the world. If you could tell, if you could have told your eight year old self something to this day, like, Think back now, like what would you tell your eight year old self right now? Um, <laughs> maybe first try to uh, learn how to swallow a pill sooner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I don't really think that I would change anything or okay. tell myself to maybe change anything that would change like the path of or the course of my life, but um, I would just say to be um more communicative with everybody uh like you know to not or have the attitude of the 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 not get you know give a fuck attitude you know a lot sooner in life it probably would have saved me from a lot of you know heartache and or just you know being or you know just depression you know in general of feeling shame and or feeling this when when we shouldn't be feeling those things at all you know those are all kind of like society driven uh stigmas mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. with that. i agree cool 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 well go ahead Joey. i really appreciate appreciate this conversation guys oh you're, you're very welcome you know and you know i was I was going to ask a quick question because 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 CJ has something on his mind, but um, but, but um, you know, just you know, being in music and stuff, you know, you said that you know you've you've traveled and stuff, and so you know, are there any you know notable experiences that you know that you've had that you would like to share? Um, well, you know, traveling to different countries are always kind of weird, especially carrying supplies on you because sometimes they know what it is, sometimes they don't. 
But um, I have to say in the last couple of years, especially flying as much as I do, um, the TSA agents have been uh, definitely trained or uh, better, better trained on knowing what a colostomy bag is and how to handle mm. that situation. So I don't have to explain myself 500 times over, which is, you know, ideal, especially traveling in airports where we know it's already chaotic. Right. Um, and, you know, just the, the, the headache of it having it all. Um, but, you know, really just the, 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 the road and, and, and traveling like on a tour bus, you know, there is, there is the rule that you're not allowed to go number two on a tour bus. <laughs> um, ju- uh, there's a number of, of reasons, but being that I have a clothing <laughs> bag, uh, you know, I really don't have to worry about it. So it's just one less kind of, uh, one less hassle. That's awesome. I see. Oh, no wicked doc said, <laughs> um, he said, I know it could be different from everyone. And just being nice sounds like it's huge for self confidence, but there's certain things that shouldn't be said slash brought up. For example, me being fairly ignorant on the subject, I feel like I'm being rude asking questions regarding this disease. Is it better? route to stay curious slash do your own research due to it coming off as rude or do you see it as someone just trying to broaden their understanding on the subject hmm. i don't see it as rude bro honestly i, lo- I, I love when people question. ask me questions about it i love when people are forward just in general in life i love when people are forward um yeah. but especially when they're uh inquisitive or they want to gain some knowledge you know you can really tell when someone's sincere and when someone is in there doing it because they would, you know, they care and they actually want to know, um, I think there's never a problem with that. And I would talk to people for hours about it if they, if they, if they wanted to, or if they had questions. Um, yeah, and it's never, never rude to me, you know. All right, and it, that's a good. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jordan. No, no, no. Go ahead, Renika. Okay, I was saying well, that's a great question because he he's asking. Should he not ask questions and do his own research or ask questions and get feedback from someone that's going through it? Um, just like what being said, there are some people that ask questions because they really, really genuinely want to know. Mm-hmm. There are some that ask questions because they're like, oh, I feel so sad for you. I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you have to understand. Or some may ask because they're being funny. So you kind of get a, a, a vibe for when someone asks a question but I feel this way if you ask a question and you know in your heart you've been sincere in your question asking then ask a question but if you know if you were ask a question to be funny or to pass judgment then I would prefer you not to ask a question that's mm-hmm. for anything in life mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you ask questions either to be nosy or either to help so what you trying to do you to be nosy or help me out which one do now so but that's how and, it, and it never hurts to do your own. It never research hurts too. to do your own, you know, research. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because um, you know, and then you might have some a better understanding. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you can do your own research, and you know, and, and that way, you know, if you do have the opportunity to ask somebody a question, you can have a you know a more educated, more informed question. So, and so it's you know, mm-hmm. it's a exactly. win-win. It's a win. It's a win-win. And so cool. Well, you know, well, thanks. You know, thanks. Thanks for sharing. You know, we're always looking for you know to answer questions, comments. You know, just like that. And so, well, cool. I have one question, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I have one question. So, Ben, have you ever met anyone on the road, like in the musical in music industry, that you identify with that have ear to bowel disease? That you connected with? Why you been on the um, road? Not exactly directly. Directly, there has been some people I've come across the road uh, that have some, you know, irritable bowel, you know, issues. Um, not Crohn's per se, but one of the the guys I work for, the bass player in the band that I work for, his girlfriend has Crohn's, and she's okay. been, su- you know, she's been struggling with it for years. Um, and you know, so we kind of have a bond, and okay. you know, with, with that, uh, you know, cronies. Crony bond, yeah. right, and, right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, so we, we, I think we can, we can kind of like tell, you know, uh, when we meet someone like that. But no, I haven't really had the chance to meet anyone else um, with a colostomy on the road. When I was younger, um, I actually went to a couple ostomy camps. Mm-hmm. When I was, yeah, because my mom felt that it would be, you know, good for me to be around some people who have already dealt with it for years. So this was a camp of like 1,200 kids um, that oh, all had um, awesome. 
some sort of colostomy or ileostomy or uh, what urostomies. Great, what a great yeah. experience. I mean, that sounds like a, that sounds like a great experience. So. And I mean, it, it was for, um, you know, it was at that time, I still struggled with me even like um, recognizing that I had like maybe even had it or like that it was there forever, you know, mm -hmm. um, but they definitely put a lot of things in perspective and seeing how other kids were handling it where you wouldn't again know that they had it, you know, going to SeaWorld and hanging out and everyone's just having a good time. Like you're looking at these kids and they're just going on with their lives, you know? And I, at that point it was still new to me, um, still very fresh um, to accept it, you know, and you know, probably in, only in the last maybe, you know, five to 10 years that I really come to, to acceptance you know with it with 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 it all with my body how I was handling it how I how I let it handle me <laughs> which is is the the really tricky the tricky thing I agree thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and so well it, it's been about a, it's been about, about half an hour or so right on yeah and so but um so we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up a little bit here but you know but you know uh first things first of course Thank you very much, sir. You know, for you know, for your time. You know, and you know, and for sharing, and for sharing your journey, for sharing your story. You know, I, 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 I sincerely appreciate it. And then, um, you know, and for people listening out there, uh, you know, if there's any projects you're currently working on, and also, you know, any, you know, social medias, you know, including your Instagram, of course, you know, how people, how people can find you. You know, please share. Um, my Instagram is uh, Mr. Ben Travers, M R Ben. Travers, T-R-A-V-E-R-S. And my studio you can check out is Astrology Days, astrology underscore days. Um, I live in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and i um, going to be going this weekend and working for the band Twiddle. Uh, that's who I work for. I'm the monitor engineer and drum tech for the band. We have two live stream gigs at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester. Actually, I think actually, sorry, that was just postponed because of New York COVID uh, regulations. So we're actually doing a live stream in Vermont. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And I love what you guys are doing in the mission, you know, to get the word out. And um, no, I, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. That means thank that you. means thank a lot. You. you know, that's why that's that's why that's why we do what we do. So it's so obvious that it means a lot coming from you and. Um, and so, and so Ben, um, you can, you and everybody else listening can uh, check us out at www.cronesveteran.com. Um, we have a awesome, uh, Teespring store, you know, full of, you know, amazing merch that will, that, that will help, uh, support, uh, our show and, you know, and, and, and folks with, you know, IBD. Um, also you can check us, our, our, our podcast is available on, uh, Google, on Spotify, on, um, Anchor on uh, Apple and of course also our YouTube channel. Um, you can find us on Twitch, follow Chill Ghost, CJ. Um, and I think uh, that's it guys. Of course, you know, you can of course follow, you know, me, you know, uh, me at Crohn's Veteran, CJ at Propero and Renika at uh, Crohn's underscore sexy with two X's. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> that's it. Get it. And that's, and that's it. And Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, we lit. So we, and so we appreciate it, Ben. And, Thank uh, you. You know, and you have a good rest of your night, sir. Awesome. You too. Much love, guys. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming back. See you later. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.